Welcome back, friends. Today, we're gonna conquer our demons. Pew, 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 pew. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. making any money. So the last few weeks, we've been doing a lot of work. We spend three days a week working on the woodworking business and like we've stayed really busy, but we're not making any money. Well, we've made a little bit, but like basically we're not making any money. Now, the reason why we're not making any money is very simple. We're not selling. <laughs> I mean, if you don't sell, you can't make money. Some people need to learn that lesson. You sell, you make money. You don't sell, you don't make money. And so you might be wondering, why are you not selling? Isn't your entire channel about that? Not really. Our channel is about starting a business that does involve selling, but it also involves a lot of other things. A lot of things that we don't want to do or that we don't like doing. That's the joke. Everybody thinks that when you're an entrepreneur, you can just do whatever you want. Not so. You have to do a ton of stuff that you don't want so that you can get what you do want. I do more now that I don't want to do than I did in my old job that I quit. And I quit that job so that I could be an entrepreneur. How does that make any sense? If you don't take away anything from our channel, please take this away. Know that starting a business is not easy. It's not for everyone. It's not easy. It's not this la la land of getting to do whatever you want to do and making millions of dollars. Starting a business is accepting responsibility for literally everything. And most employees don't even accept responsibility for their whole job. So how are you going to take responsibility for an entire business if you can't even take responsibility for your little job? Now, don't get me wrong. Having your own business is amazing because I'm only accountable to myself, which is a double-edged sword, but I don't have anybody breathing down my neck. I can do things the way that I wanna do them. And the business's success is a direct proportion of the amount of effort and strategic work that Jenny and I both put in together. So it's a great deal. Just don't think that a woodworking business is gonna be easy. Don't think, oh, all I gotta do is build 10 of these and they'll sell on their own. That is not how it works. So we decided this week that we would start selling. We're gonna contact realtors and we're gonna sell them closing gifts that have their information engraved on it, the new homeowner's name engraved on it. It's a great business plan. We're super excited to, to, to start it. So we started getting a list together. We got a bunch of names, we got a couple contacts we have. And right as we were about to make the very first call, Jenny looks at me and says, what are our customers gonna buy after they open their cutting board? And she's so right. We don't have any other products to sell to our potential customers once they open the box and get a cutting board. Now, we're gonna make most of our money on the follow-on sales. Yeah, we make a little bit of money from the cutting boards, but that's not where the business is gonna make money. The kitchen tables, the coffee tables, the media centers, that's the kind of stuff that is really gonna push the business forward. So us reaching out to realtors before we have a couple of products to sell the new homeowners, that's like opening a movie theater without a popcorn stand. Yeah, people are gonna come to the movies, but you're not gonna make any money because you're not selling popcorn, you're not selling drinks, you're not selling candy. We gotta have a way to make money in this business. So we just decided that we would hold off on selling just a little bit longer and get a couple of products ready to go before we you know, start trying to put our name out there. And that unleashed an enormous amount of work that we realized we had just been ignoring because we don't like doing stuff like that. The behind the scenes, the little details. For example, we wanted to include flyers in our cutting board boxes so that when people open the box, they instantly saw everything else that we sell. But to have a flyer, you have to have pictures of that product. And to have pictures of the product, you have to have a prototype. And to have a prototype of that product, you have to have a set design. And to start designing, you need to know what you're gonna offer, what options are gonna come with that design. So just like that, we've had so many other tasks backing up to this one thing that sounded super simple. So in addition to all that work for one product, we also had to update the website because our website kind of looked like trash. So we had to make that look 10% better. 
We also had to write our customer policies. Are we gonna accept returns? How are we gonna handle some Karen that calls up and wants to start verbally abusing our employees? We gotta deal with that. We gotta write systems and policies to handle that before it happens. Otherwise you're left scrambling to try and you know get an order out, but you're also dealing with all these other issues that are on fire. You're just trying to protect your future self from having to do too much. Anyway, we just had a lot of work to do this week. So I guess we'll just take you through and show you exactly what we were working on. What you doing? Making flyers. For what? Uh, the cutting boards and charcuterie boards. So basically what we want to do is every time we sell a cutting board, we want to put like a nice flyer in there that has pictures of our charcuterie boards. So once they get their cutting boards, like, hey, just a heads up, we also sell these. So I'm making these little flyers with really pretty pictures of them. We decorated one, we made it like Christmas themed. That's what I'm doing, just playing with Photoshop. You and Photoshop are like best friends, right? No. What are you doing? I am designing our larger kitchen table. So I'm basically taking the coffee table model that we have and just making it a little bigger to make it a kitchen table. So people can be all matchy matchy and stuff? Yeah, they can be all matchy matchy. It's like car commercials where you see all the cars lined up. They all kind of look similar, but they're all a little bit different. That's kind of the look we're going for. Fancy, fancy. This is a program called SketchUp because we always get 10 million questions about yes. it. What's that program you're using at 1422? So basically what we're doing with the kitchen tables and stuff is we're trying to make as many interchangeable parts as possible. Um, everything's going to be high quality. But the, the trade-off for that is that we have to have it repeatable. So like you can see, I'm working here on the table base for the kitchen table. It's gonna have a lot of the same parts as the coffee table, just maybe slightly different dimensions. Um, we're just trying to cut down the number of like unique pieces we have to build and produce. So in my own little pretend imagination world, um, I have a bunch of like shelving racks with a ton of parts on it and they're all labeled and the, the woodworker or whatever takes the little like sheet of paper for a kitchen table, uh, kind of like an Amazon guy in the warehouse, like taking a buggy and pulling down all the parts you need to build a kitchen table that are already pre-cut uh, pre-dimensioned, pre-stabilized everything up on the racks and then you put all the pieces in a cart and then you take it to a bench and then you assemble the whole thing, send it to finishing, send it to delivery. Um, so I'm just trying to make as many interchangeable parts as possible so that we don't have to waste a whole bunch of time making both a part for the coffee table and a part for the kitchen table. We can just kind of interchange them. Yeah. This is the stuff that's actually going to make a difference with exactly. the business, but nobody is ever going to see it. Yep. Um, and it's really kind of disheartening because we really want to get moving and get selling and, you know, talk to realtors and everything. But like, we're just not ready yet. Like we, we if we really want to scale, if we really want to be prepared when we get an order for 20 kitchen tables for a restaurant, then, you know, we're, we're just going to have to build and scale slowly to start out and then we'll hockey stick grow over time. Being patient in the beginning because we know we'll appreciate it later on. The website. Uh, we had to make it look really nice. It kind of looked like trash. It was workable. It did its job, but it didn't look very good. So I had to go spend a couple hours making it look good. I went to a bunch of other furniture websites and these companies spend tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on their web designer and exactly, I mean, the psychology of what goes into a web page to keep your eyeballs locked into it is breathtaking. You have no idea how much work goes into that, but I don't have the budget to hire somebody like that. I can rip off what the other furniture websites are doing. So without violating any copyright infringements or anything like that, I just copied and pasted everything that I saw working for their website onto ours. The other flyer I've been working on is our little board care flyer. Obviously you can't sell people like a charcuterie board or a cutting board and then not tell them how to take care of it because that's going to be one of their first questions, especially after they have it for a month or so. So this is a little QR code. They just open their camera and put it right on top of it, takes them right to our website. So we decided to make these kind of tiny and cute. And also I was ordering 
more boxes. So we started off with a smaller number just to make sure we liked them. We know we like them and you guys do too, thanks to your comments in our packaging video. So we ordered some more and we also got some smaller ones for our refinishing kits. So I kind of had to redesign that and get it to the right size so that we could put our finishing tins and our um, applicator pads in there. So while we're in the process of doing all this, Davis remembered the video he saw, um, and I think it was like an interview with Will Smith, but anyways, he was talking about this project when he was younger. He was building a brick wall, and it was such a big project, he couldn't see it all the way through. He was like eight years old, but all he remembers was just laying every single brick as perfectly as he could. That was his only task. He had to one by one lay every brick and eventually he would have an entire wall. But he kind of had to trust the process and say, hey, I can't build this entire brick wall today. I can only lay this brick as perfectly as I can lay one brick. And that's kind of what we've been taking to heart this week is we can't build this entire business and every single product perfectly right away within a month. We just can't. We're gonna break it. Something's not gonna work. We're gonna get frustrated. We just have to lay each brick of the process, each little task properly so that when we get to the end, eventually it'll be a good brick wall that's not about to topple over, that's not lopsided, that's not vulnerable or weak in certain areas, but a good, strong, sturdy brick wall that we don't have to worry about anymore. And that hurts. Like, we just want to sprint to the end. We don't want to be caught up and bogged down by all the little details on the way there. We just want to do it. We just want to take action and go. So like we said in the beginning, running a business requires you to do things that you don't like doing. And yet you can run away from it for a little while. You can avoid the things or the aspects of it that you don't like, but it's gonna catch up with you. And when it catches up with you, all of a sudden you feel like you don't have enough time to fix it. Whereas if you just, I guess, faced your demons now and organized what you don't like doing up front, then it never has to bother you again in the future. So if you wanna hear more about this, it's what we talked about in the podcast this week. The link to all that is in the description under the like button below. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna hear more about this process. So anyways, that's just the lesson we learned this week while we're trying to build this business in the Houston area. If you wanna follow along and see more, subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. So thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.